Hey, welcome. Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk. It's been an absolutely fantastic past 10, 11 episodes so far. And uh, the love that you've all been showering on us has been uh, super amazing. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much um, for all of that. Um, unfortunately, I have some sad news. We'll be uh, coming to an end. This is our very final episode of Let's Talk Season 2. We've enjoyed it immensely and uh, we hope you have too. Um, but don't worry because we will be back soon with Season 3. And in the meantime, we've got our very final episode to show you. So get comfy and let's start. So my next guest, well, I should really say my final guest for the Let's Talk uh, series uh, this uh, week is um, a very talented, uh, hugely recognised all over the world, uh, an award-winning artist. Um, and uh, I'm sure uh, when I say that he's come from Dewsbury uh, and uh, has a base here in, uh, in Yorkshire, in Bradford as well, um, you're probably going to get closer to who I'm talking about. Uh, this person has been making people look beautiful all over the world. And he's also been passing on his skills and talent through his academy. And we are extremely proud and extremely privileged as well to have him here with us today. I am talking about none other than Naeem Khan. Hi, Naeem. Hi, Fatima. But I don't want to talk to you today. Really? Yeah. Yes, well, really. Why? I don't why? want to talk to you. I want to talk to Mohammed Naim Sawa. Okay, I'm ready for it. Thank you. Kare shuru. So let's start from um, the beginning. For those of you who don't know, uh, firstly, where have you been? Naim has been, you know, a, a makeup artist. Uh, a designer of jewellery, a designer of many things for many, many decades. And his love affair with makeup started 41 years ago, uh, since you were literally a three year old. Uh, is that fact, right? No, when I was since born. A, since you were born. A born artist. As a born artist. Yeah. Okay. So, what was, so tell us about your earlier. But what grateful was for that. Yeah. Grateful. To the Almighty. To Almighty. Yeah. I've always had that with me. As I travel on my journey, yeah, it's always been there, and I always remember, don't forget your roots. Yeah, I'll say something in Urdu. You understand? Gulab ka phool hota hai na, wo bhi mitti se nikalta hai. Absolutely, absolutely. And what you get on it is thorns. That's the journey, your hardship, and then you flourish into a flower. So I'm glad you've done this today. I just quite honest want to be open about everything. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Good, good. Chalta hai. <laughs> you so, get that, don't you? Absolutely, absolutely. So I'm, I'm really glad, I'm really happy that you're here. We're really honoured, actually, to have you here because you're normally globe trotting around the world doing makeup for many big stars. So tell us about how did the journey start? When did you know within you that you wanted to do this as a profession? Just in That's all I know is... Colour, I always said colour is my language mm. because I was academically very, I didn't do well at school academically, but creatively it was there. I remember painting pictures when I was around about six, seven in infant school. Sorry, nursery. And I drew a teacher's picture with paint and everybody else drew these pictures, but mine, she's like, oh, can I take this home? And that's when I started to realise, not realise then, but I always knew I loved art. You just follow your heart. That's what I said. Just follow it. Let it flow like a fountain, and like a waterfall and just go. That's how art is created. That's how I perceive and see art. And when you said, you know, I've designed jewellery, I've done beautiful brides. What I believe is when I'm creating something, I'm creating a beautiful woman. I'm painting a beautiful woman. So, for example, I get a bride. We've done a the makeup. Then 
I will just go that a bit further to tell them how to hold themselves up, how to pose for pictures. So, but I've learned it the hard way. I'm giving a beauty to the world, but it's come from a very dark place. Because you started doing makeup at a very early age. This was 80s, 90s, and in those days, South Asian men were not seen in those professions at all. There was and a, it was <clears throat> it was quite frowned upon, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. But one thing I'll say, Fatima, it's always been there from the beginning. Mm. The men have been the designers, the men have been the ones that create. I mean, for example, cooks, they men. It's a female field known as it used to be known as a female field. Same with makeup, same with fashion. You know? So I believe it's, it is something that you are just born to do. And why I have a deep connection, because from a very young age, we were growing up in the 80s, and you're going to remember some of this stuff. It was amazing. So the only entertainment, the bit of colour that, you know, we used to have, I mean, obviously when I was growing up, paints and pencil crayons and makeup, and it was all about colour. And then, then designing, drawing, sculptures. I had my own little world. From a very young age, my mum said that this boy is always in his room, doesn't want to talk to nobody, and all he does is he creates and he creates and he creates. I was known to be the little bit of the uh, black sheep of the family, like they say, you know. But, you know, it, it, it was hard in the sense, yes, you're right, going back to back in the 80s. Because I think what, when our, our parents immigrated, I think they came with a certain mindset. And because they were labourers, and that's the work they were going into. I don't think there were many opportunities, even if you were creative. Because of course there would have been women. I mean, women used to make clothes back in the days. Uh, for weddings, they used to prepare, you know, the uh, the decor. You know, I remember my mum, she was a fantastic machinist. And I learned a lot, uh, you know, how to sew, how to put and cut. And I just feel sometimes that we're lucky because we're getting to express it. But there would have been so many people in that time that came for a better life they would have had to sacrifice their creativity so i'm grateful that i had the opportunity but it's still not been easy do you want to elaborate more on that i'm very jalaki henna <laughs> <laughs> you know how to get things out of people don't you fatima uh i'm going to talk about it from a creative perspective mm. okay but then i do feel we're going to branch out into other things i don't know how much time we've got yeah. But I'll try to cover a little bit of everything. So, like you said, you know, um, yes, it was oh Asian boy, Asian man doing makeup, you know, and it it did at the beginning. Mm. People couldn't accept it. Mm. But how I am as a person, and when you have this energy flowing through you of creativity, you don't give up. Fuck, I'm sorry, you complete me later. You yeah. don't. It's it's what every child is gifted in different ways. Every child is unique. What I say is find what they're good at and encourage it. Our parents didn't have the skills to recognize that. But my mom, she taught me how to sew. She I remember her me me playing with a makeup bag and I was playing around with the lipstick at the age of like two three. I was constantly digging in her in a makeup bag, and. Then we had obviously a family in Pakistan. This is where that story that I've told you before. So growing up, creativity, flowers, anything colourful used to inspire me. I remember playing the summer. You know what the summer was like in the 80s, the streets and, yeah. you know, auntie's doors right open, cousin yeah. ice cream vans, VCR videos, remember tapes, Walkman. Amazing days. And the weddings were so much fun in the house. They used to have the dolki. Uh, all the anti it was a lot more emotional, I feel, that time was. I mean, things have changed, but there's good things that have come as well. Mm. Uh, there's always good and bad. Mm. No matter what century, what decade we go from, that's always going to be there. Mm. But I do remember the moments, and it was so special. Mm. That inspired me. Mm. Bollywood films were probably my biggest inspiration, you know. And the stars, what they gave us from our... You know, I used to see my parents having a stressful life and maybe having, you know, two, three hours of entertainment, you know, a bit of dance, you know, a bit of music. And it's a need, you know, sometimes people don't realise, but entertainment plays a very big part in society. It's a structure 
of society, but I do feel it's been ignored by our people. You know, I, I mean, you know, the back stamping industry has not progressed as well it should be because it's something that's constantly looked down upon. But what you should remember is going through the COVID, who who's entertaining? Netflix, everybody's watching Netflix, everybody's watching all movies. There was nothing to do. So these people in them hard times are entertaining you. So sometimes people don't look at it from that perspective, mm. you know, and they do get abused. And same happened with me when I was growing up. I was a very creative child. I was an expressive child. I loved sculpture. I loved fine art. I loved poetry. I was listening to ghazals at the age of 19. Muhammad uh, Rafi, Noor Jahan, uh, Azi, uh, sorry, um, Zubaydah Khanum, you know. It was just something that was in inbuilt, drilled inside me. So, go, shall we go to the Pakistan story? Yeah, well, yeah. we... So basically the films were... Yeah. My, so this is what made you... How I learned makeup. Yeah. I always say... Yeah. Mm. But you've got to do something with it. Yeah. It's giving you something. Yeah. Use it. So th this is what formed your sort of style and personality. And is this why you always used to... Because when you came into the industry, into the Asian bridal industry, um, you... Your, your, you sort of revolutionised makeup in a way as well. Because... Roll it, Vegas, <laughs> Well, I'm going to say on record. I'm going to say on record. I believe that you revolutionise makeup because a lot of your brides, you your brides were always made larger than life they were, yes. compared to most other makeup artists, and um, I think that that was also an expression of your personality coming. You were leaving your trademark. Of course, I've grown up with it. So this larger than life creation, because you could have been subtle, you mm -hmm. know, because obviously, sorry, that's okay. Um, because the, you could have done um, with a lot of toned down colours. Um, because Can I just stop there you? Was, yeah. Don't talk to me about toned down colours. <laughs> okay? I'm, a, I'm my own style artist. Yeah. Okay? Everybody is look Fatima. Not everybody's going to look what Chanel. I'm to say, what I'm trying to say is you made those larger than lives, right? And you, you got them accepted. Because obviously there's people like me who, you know... You've tried a few times mm. to have me sit down and have some makeup on, but I don't wear makeup. And sometimes when I look at makeup, I think, you know, that's a, a, a lot. But, you know, when I look at your makeup, though, and when I look at what mm. you've done, I admire that as a piece of art. Mm. Um, and in South Asian weddings, that art connection has never been there, has it? It's just been about, I need to look pretty, it's my big day. Mm -hmm. I think generally as well, I wouldn't say just South Asian, but you actually put your artistic stamp on it and you got accepted with that artistic stamp in the industry. Accepted, yes, and it did happen kind of very quick. Yeah. Uh, because so, you know, like you were saying, there was a lot of hardships, but despite those hardships, it didn't stop you from still wanting to it was make never gonna and stop. do things the way you wanted the way you chose, the Can way you, you stop visualized. a storm from brewing? No. Well, that's it. Yeah. You know, when I came in earlier, you know what these reminded me of? When yeah. I was in Pakistan and I don't like frogs. And I'm there sat doing a shoot and there's a frog sat there. No frogs thinking, here. I know it's plastic. <laughs> so basically, I looked at that frog. And after that, you know, he was going, brah, brah, brah. I thought this thing needs to shut up. It started raining. I asked my mum, I goes, this thing it was doing my it was irritating me and then it started to storm and we had to pack everything and go this was in Pakistan my mom says to me you know when a mendic speaks yeah a frog yeah. in croaks yeah it means a big tufan's coming a big storm a big storm's gonna come and this was something that Noor Jahan said to me mom I call her mom she's like a mother to me her let's voice, talk about let's talk about your relationship with the leading ladies of Pakistan you've met You've met almost all of them, haven't you? And you've sat with them, you've watched them get ready, get dressed. From a very young age, yes, I did. Yeah. Uh, that's because, obviously, what my grandfather mm -hmm. was creative. I could see you a little bit in my dad as well, but he'd, he didn't express it. It was the days of coming and working and sending money back home, you know, for family support and stuff. So I could see it where I get it from, get it from more from my mother's side. My personalities are very similar. Me yeah. and my mum, we clash. I love her, but we clash. Very strong-minded. She was an inspiration to me, my mum was. She was a strong woman. So that encouraged me. 
mm. you know, she used to get whatever you want makeup. There was never this encouragement from my mother. I think a mother will start, uh, will will re- respect and accept her child, no matter what he wants to be, what what sector, what he wants to go into. And even she was a very traditional mother. She's got a creative streak in her. My mum and my grandfather. Now my grandfather had connect. He was linked back in the days. They used to do you know like pantomime shows, and you know back in the villages that put little shows up and stuff. Mm. Uh, he used to be in there and he used to play uh, the doubler. Oh, so your grandfather was an artist as well? Yeah. So, obviously, they used to go and do, you know, they have melee in Pakistan, don't they? Mm. Really big melee. Mm. So, they perform in one mela, going to another mela. Mm. So, that's how we got in. And that's how then I was introduced and taken. I was very young, very young. I'm 41 now. So, I must have been about seven, eight. And so obviously he'd go over with poetry that he'd write, you know, for songs and stuff. Uh, he used to write songs, Punjabi songs, punch, Punjabi poetry. So obviously he had that relationship with, with the film industry. Mm. So that was actually my mamu that came here and he noticed it in me. I was only young. He goes, he's very creative. He goes, when he graduates, you know, take, we'll take him to Pakistan. But I was going on and off in that time. Back and forth. Yeah, I, I, was, I lived there quite a lot. So basically my diet was watching these beautiful women, powerful women, living in a society with poverty, with suppression, not many opportunities to women to stand and perform on stage and earn a living the right way. That was that was just something really inspiring because you didn't see here. Mm. You know, you don't see women in them, them powerful positions. So that really inspired me. So when Noor Jahan would be getting ready, and I used to go with my grandfather and I'd run into her bedroom and she wouldn't allow anybody in the room until she had put her face on. So, but I used to run there and I used to sit and watch her and she never let, she never told me to leave the room. She would not allow anybody in the room. And I remember she used to get the powder puffs, you know, the mm. big ones and she just tapped me like this on the nose and she said, there's something in your eyes. She goes, you're going to be an artist, a star one day. Wow, the yeah. legend. Even the though I was stuck far, Toba. Mm. No, no, no. I'm still nothing, still learning, learning from life, learning from Zindagi, mm. not just talking about my industry, you learn every day, sometimes I learn from my younger nieces, they are so fantastic at it, but we came from a time where we were limited, mm. you know, there's a story I always tell my friends, there used to be one library book, and 1980s makeup was <laughs> not very nice, but obviously how it's portrayed now with the better cosmetics and colours, yeah, it's enhanced and it's a lot nicer. But I know what they were trying to do. It was a punk era, Madonna, Michael Jackson. It was a crazy time. They did it fantastically, didn't they? Mm. It was playing with colour, dangerous. You had the electric blues, shocking pinks, neon yellows. So there's pictures I've seen of my mum and I'm thinking, what have you done? Do you get it? Of my family or my aunties. So see, that's when she said it. That, that you're going to be she, a big she, star, yeah, she yeah. goes to the storm brewing. She was an oh... Artist. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. I went to uh to even pray Fatia on her on her Qabr's Qabr as well. Yeah. Went to the Qabrstan in Karachi. Uh so these women, for people like us lot, were like treasures. Mm. You know, that three hours of watching a movie, my family'd watch it, go to bed. I'll be back on the VCR, put the tape back in, pausing, trying to work out how yeah. this magic's been put together. I was mm. trying to unjigsaw it and I could mm. do it. Yeah. Because I was creative. What did you like about the Noor Jaha that you saw on well, screen Noor, Noor and the one that you met in real putting her makeup on and telling you that you're going to be a big there star? There is no difference. She is what she is 24 really? hours a day. Glamour. Mm. Right to her last day, she was glammed up. I mean, look how beautiful her daughters are. Mm. They're dressing the same style, you know, the silk saris and... You know, she was the icon for Pakistan. There was no other icon at the time, female mm. icon in such a powerful position. Mm. So, so you had all of these that, you know, yeah, I was at lucky, your disposal? but you, I did you... it as well because I wasn't back here, and it broke that connection. Right. Because my soul has always been, mm. even though I I love my country, I love mm. Great Britain. You know, it's given so many opportunities, and you know, and I love the Queen. You know. Mm. Um, so, but my soul is always been in Lahore. Mm. 
you know, my body's yeah. been here, mm. but my soul's been traveling there, mm. you know, going through like the Ganya, the red light area, the Mundis, the Kote, the, the, even, even the roads and even the rawness of it, the little villages, the, mm. the trucks, the bus a day. It has its own magic, doesn't it, Pakistan? Yeah, yeah of yeah. course. It, I mean, we can't talk about politics now, yeah. but one day I'll the, write Those to. are your roots, aren't they? The, yeah. That's your culture, that's, why I that's gathered your heritage. My, that's so where I found it's my always going to take you back there, isn't it? But let me it? tell you about that one book. It was a mm. horrible makeup book, but it was a little bit of something for me, like a little trophy. I was all, this was when I was in like high school, first year. Mm. So I used to get the book, take it out. Obviously, I had to bring it back after seven days. So I'd bring it back and I'd hide it under the, um, on the shelf. Yeah, but it was magic for me because yeah. it was not really much, but it was showing you like the 80s style, which I still loved. Yeah. You understand? I'm a big fan of the 80s, but it wasn't well presented, mm. but it was still magic for me, a bit of magic dust. So I used to, used to see me just sliding it in you like a right little sly <laughs> I was. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I used to slide it when nobody was looking at slide it because I had so much love for that book. So it was Christmas time. And I'm there looking for the book and it goes, Naeem. They had it wrapped up in a nice little sparkly paper and they were like, you can take this. We don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and that book, you know, and then... That's the library, isn't it? Yeah, and then there. I had a little bit of that. I mean, I, could break, I couldn't really break down everything by watching, you know, mm. 3D because there was too much. I, I used to love the dance, I used to love the clothes, I used to... I used to love everything yeah, about it. Yeah. So, but I did manage to unjigsaw mm. this this mystery yeah. about how do you make a wide nose look slimmer? How would you make a wider face look slimmer? Um, sorry, nose contour. You know, what I'm talking about contour. Yeah. yeah, I've done it so much that I just can't even bother talking about it sometimes. <laughs> so, yeah, it was like a, a jigsaw slowly coming together. Yeah, and it came together. Yeah, you've unpicked makeup so well, and. You know, the, your brides are just simply, you know, I just could stare at them because all day I paint. long. Because I always so tell much... them a painter. I'm yeah. not somebody that puts makeup on. Yeah. It has my soul in it. It has my, it has me in it, yeah. you know. It represents me, my yeah. beauty and my pain. Yeah. Because there, I do feel with my work. Yeah. I'm an artist, you know, I'm going to be honest. I love my work. Yeah. But I also love other people's work. Yes. You know. That have a style that appeals to me because makeup is not just about, you know, a red lipstick or a blue eyeshadow. It's a lot deeper mm. because when I create, I try to enhance and make that person or sorry, that lady or man or boy to feel like they are the most beautiful creatures to ever to be formed. My inspiration has been like Arabic makeup and Arabic makeup's very, it's got a very kind of serpent deserty you know like kind of egyptian kind of twist in it and it's kind of kind of daring it's kind of it takes you deep so when you're creating looks you've got to ins be inspired visuals i used to carry a sketchbook this fat with because we use we never used to have iphones nokia motorola do you remember so sketch sketching days. drawing if i saw something on the floor like a little bit of a something inspiring like a leaf or a flower petal i'd put it in i'd create something really magical and that was a part of my journey so when i train i introduce that little treasure that i've collected over so many years because it's got from me uh going fashion design i was expressive always expressive but when i studied fashion i met people like myself i met some cool and they are all crazy good-hearted people that's all i learned whilst i was on the fashion course you feel you feel you meet the most amazing people they've got so much expression they're expressing their art through through designing clothes or painting or something and i think that takes a lot of power sometimes to come out with to bring your car out to pull your car out it's like pulling your soul out for me it has been mm. this journey for me has been soul wrenching i'm not ready to go into it today even though you're saying you speak to name which i promise you you are speaking to name okay but i wonder wonder we will i really want to know about your experience because you you talked about your journey in terms of makeup and in mm -hmm. terms of your passion for the mm -hmm. profession but you haven't really talked about you know why do you you're somebody that always likes to go out of your comfort zone and when I say comfort zone, you know, you have these frequent visits to Pakistan. Mm. And most people, when they have go to Pakistan, they go because they're going for a holiday, going to visit some family, going to tour, going to enjoy the culture, the food, and all of that. But you actually visit mm. 
mm. for a different purpose. Mm. You go into dangerous territory. Oh, yes. I want to know the dark side. You And you've explored the dark side of Pakistan, such as the red light district. Of course here I Mandi, have. haven't you? Of course I have. I've been to a worse place than that called Tibbi Gali. Really? And you, anybody can Google this. Mm. It's probably the most, like I said, soul-wrenching experience. Hira Mandi was painful because remember, Fatima, I was used to seeing Bollywood films, Indian film, Pakistani films, and the way it's portrayed there, beautiful courtesans, jewellery, clothes, and glamorous big houses, what they call a kota, <laughs> nothing like that. It might have been back in the days, I've heard of stories mm. from back in the Mughal era where these ladies were so respected in society because the Mughal kings and queens used to send their children to 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 learn tahzeeb, ada, manners, how to sit, how to talk, learn poetry from, from them. But it just went the wrong way. That's going to politics and partition and all that crap. Yeah, because we've always heard stories that they were really wealthy as well. They had a lot of money between them. But No, what yeah. I visited back in the 80s and in the time of Anjuman, Mm. Uh, Mumtaz, uh, it was a kind of very 80s kind of era at that time and it was quite, Pakistan was quite a dark place at that time. Yeah. I know now things are changing so I, I, I basically went through because one of my friends, uh, Didar, mm. she's, she's, like a, she's like a soul sister, she's like a friend, she's everything. She's the one that pushed me, you know. Why I have so much respect now, these ladies have got a bad reputation in Pakistan. Anybody that dances, you know, anybody that performs goes into the category of being, I don't want to use the word. Shall I? It's, it's not shot. a nice word and I don't like saying it and I think you know what it is, but people, normal people refer to them mm. as, uh, you know, in, in that, using that terminology, term, dermatology. I wanted, to be a derm- I wanted to be a, term- a dermatologist. <laughs> you know I'm dyslexic, you just kick in when you need to. Don't worry. So, oh, it's just don't judge anybody, Fatima. It's yeah. going to go deep into it. I think it could be another topic, but it's nothing the way it was. It was basically little rooms. And I, I wanted to buy instruments. You know, I used to like the tabla because my grandfather had one. I, I sit there. I went to buy things and they said, you have to go into the red light, red light area because in music, instruments is the best place if you go there so obviously bought my stuff night time so the dad showed me around and it was actually the dad that took me it was actually her uh, one of her servants that I became really good friends with I can't remember her name she had a funny name she was a character though and uh, she goes bad you won't go she goes I'll take you so me and her went on a rickshaw at night time and went there during the day with the dad to get the blade and stuff and I looked around and I could see like women standing there and like getting ready and stuff. And I thought, this seems interesting. I, I was mesmerised and then she mm. took me and it was totally lit up like the blah, dancing, music, women standing, uh, dressed up. So I was like, wow, this is like a beautiful place. Mm. But there's always something quite ugly behind it. I was young, I didn't know. And the lady with, that was with me was saying, it's not what you see, but you're still young. Really? Mm. Wow. And do you think these experiences have shaped you to who you've become? Oh my God, your journey, you everything in, in journey in life shapes you. Yeah. How life moulds you into, a, yeah, into whatever it wants, mm. you know. Um, there's, there's a Punjabi song I really like, because we talk about moulding and start thinking about like uh, wind, you know. Because all we artists, we get inspired by wind. Like, I've done shoots where we use fans and winds, rain. It's all beautiful. Mm. Try to make the most out of everything. Yeah. Um, so there's this song. It was from the film Jiva, Pakistan. This is when I was in Pakistan in the 80s and it was playing, that song was. And it goes something like this. Chule agar tujko hawa lagta hai ye bhi mujhe bura. Wow. That, that's the kind of stuff I was learning listening that's to deep. of course deep. it is that's Baba Bulle Shah yeah no you ask for my generation yeah they won't know it's not it's not, something so beautiful is not even taught in the Pakistan's uh, education syllabus mm. I've got a friend who's an educationist in Pakistan and she told me maybe if Baba Bulle Shah was taught Pakistan wouldn't be where it is yeah you know yeah. anything could look nice and shiny on the outside yeah 
but always remember shisha a mirror but might shine it? but what's behind it yeah beat kali you know yeah so wow. that's how you should see life yeah. i do not judge toba no no never speaking of judge i think that leads us nicely on to this is obviously our final talk show and the reason oh, why we done already yeah and the you reason you didn't want me here and before. the reason why it's, i didn't but now i think i want you again no you didn't Because want name khan we, we need to have a real talk you know when you said you what don't you judge what are you trying to get out of me madam me men who are to das i want you to to uh, come back for a show Let, can we quickly just on talk on real about... talk and not judging and makeup you'll never get makeup on me though i'll just tell you that now well if there's no makeup then i'm not going to say anything more after this interview we're done <laughs> because for the next project yes we so guys watch this because he's telling us about our next project me and you working together yeah uh we're going to bring a show to somebody you guys somebody who loves makeup somebody who detests it for the next show we're having a complete makeover new backdrop you're going to see a new fatima who wants to see a new fatima <laughs> all done up created by my magic who does not want to see a fully glammed up i want people to vote in in this Is it on Facebook? Yes. In the f- where but yeah. Do you want to see well, people that know Fatima? Do you want to see her looking like a Bollywood actress? Oh my god. Or a diva. A diva or a Bollywood actress. Makeup yeah. plays a very big part in our life in society. Just something I listen to some days like that. We've been painting faces since the day we were bloody created. But oh, that's another topic that will go too deep. So guys, that's it for let's talk. That's it for this season. Um we'll be back with season 3 but in between we're back with a brand new show with Naeem Khan where we make it real no judging and I don't think I'll be getting makeup on this face but we'll see he thinks he thinks otherwise and we'll if you see. think otherwise then as he's asked please do comment and please send in your votes <laughs>